Hello there. My name is Chris, and I'm the host of this channel. Uh, I am a little on the tired side. It's been a long day of work, uh, up late last night, and it's going to be another late one as I get ready the next Comic Tropes. That's just part of the deal, though, when you uh, decide to do YouTube, because uh, you still have to have your regular job, so it's kind of like having two jobs at once. It can be a little tiring, but... um. Let's see. Oh, we've got uh, RuneScape. How's it going, man? Nice to see you. Surprised I didn't see you at work today. But that's okay. I'll just uh, take all your deals. Hello, Halo Cable. Hello, Ren. Hello, James Stewart. Thank you all for uh, jumping into the chat room. I'm not 100% sure I'm using the, um, the word uh, correctly today. The word that Inktober prompts. The, the prompt word is sling. And I was thinking of sling in kind of the same way that you'd use swing. Like, if you're slinging something, I don't know. I, I, I might be, like, just completely misinterpreting that word, I'm starting to think. Because I drew a scene from The Pit and the Pendulum. So I'm thinking of, like, that pendulum. Like, you're, you're going to sling it. But maybe that just is swing? I don't know. I don't know if I got that right. But whatever. We'll just go with it. Hello, Gene. And uh, let's see. Some other folks jumped in. Um... Franco, Iron Shell, uh, Corey, Snurk. Is that Filthy Frank? It is not Filthy Frank. Good guess. Um, sling also means throw. Yeah, so um, maybe I'm sort of right there. I don't know. I don't know. Um, hello, Khalid. And uh, hello, what else? Sigamigs. Hello, Chrissy. Filthy Frank is his pink in his... Uh, yeah. I'm not much of an expert on a uh, filthy Frank. Chrissy is now a moderator. I'm giving it, giving her the power. And you know what? I can trust RuneScape because I know him in real life, so I could always punish him if he didn't use this power correctly. RuneScape, you now have moderator powers. Don't go crazy with these moderator powers. This is just in case things go crazy, and they never have. Hello, Corey. Hello, Clive. Hello, Juan. Hello, Roman. Look at all that. Look at all that. That's awesome. Well, let's start inking, right? Um, this one's going to be like, uh, you know, good because I can do as much or as little as I want with the background on it. Uh, so that gives me a little bit of uh, flexibility because I still have quite a bit to do for the next comic tropes, which is a little frustrating, but, you know, eh, whatever. Any chance of you doing something in the style of Mobius? Oh, I wish I had that kind of talent. I, I, don't, I don't think so, man. Uh, I don't think I. I don't think I can really draw like him in that sort of that European style. Hello, Rishi. You don't feel special. Y you are. Uh, let's see. I'll remove your moderator powers to make you feel special. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, Hello, Clive. I am here to see you draw. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Um, what's the drawing, Chris? You know, primarily it's uh, this guy, uh, Nicholas, from The Pit and the Pendulum, uh, specifically the 1961 film adaptation by uh, Roger Corman. Back when uh, being low budget did not mean bad. Uh starring Vincent Price, and this movie did so well critically and commercially that Roger Corman went on to fund six more adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe stories five of them starring Vincent Price uh, so this movie definitely had a huge role in making Vincent Price the horror icon he's remembered as today Fave Edgar Allan Poe story minus cask. Maybe um, the Telltale Heart. Hello, uh, Texas Grizzly. <laughs> yeah, Vincent Price is pretty awesome. He was a really unique uh, character.
My favorite impression of Vincent Price is by this comedian, James Adomian. Uh, there was a, a web series like 10 years ago or something called uh, Yacht Rock. These like fictionalized accounts of uh, real life uh, bands and stuff that all sort of collaborated and made kind of smooth rock and roll back in the day. And uh, there's an episode where Michael Jackson is starting to get too hardcore, like with his rock and roll. So the band Toto teams up with Vincent Price to hold a seance, which will spook the music back into uh, Michael Jackson. And James Adomian's performance as Vincent Price is so hilarious. Smooth music. How's Chibi? Chibi's pretty dope. Let's see. Our great grandmother used to babysit for Vincent Price. I totally forgot about that. Oh man, you remember so much family history, Gene. That is amazing. Our great grandmother was a babysitter for for Vincent Price. Man, that is wild. That sounds great. The Alan Parsons Project made an entire symphonic prog album based on post stories. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Didn't you hear me rapping on the door? <laughs> no, Corey, I didn't. A gentle rap rapping. A gentle tap tapping. Chrissy thinks I do a terrible uh, Vincent Price impression, but I think it's great. <laughs> Uh, I the Telltale Batman games. No, I played the Telltale Walking Dead games, the first ones that they made, the first ones. Ghosts, the afterlife, wooky spooky spiders. I went to school with a girl whose family would kennel the Undertaker's dogs. That's cool. My dad's actually a neighbor of uh, Triple H. Like, literally, he lives, like, two houses down. <sighs> Astros headed to the World Series. Not surprised. Not really. I'm rooting for the Nationals. I used to live in D.C. for 10 years. The album is called Tales of Mystery and Imagination. That's a good title for for an uh, album about uh, Edgar Allan Poe-inspired stories. Very cool. Oh, I was like thinking that this was like looking too thick, and it's because I was using too thick a brush. That's much better. My dad has a coworker who is a neighbor with Steve Wozniak. That's cool. It's obscure as great grandma babysitting Vincent Price, but not not as poignant, but cool story. Let's see. Gurgen Furkalat is here. Do I believe in ghosts? I don't. I think that would be cool, but no. I'm, I'm too much of a skeptic at heart. I, I don't believe in things like ghosts. Um, not that I know for a fact anything, but nah, I'm, I'm a pretty skeptical dude. I like stories about people that believe in ghosts because... Storytelling wise, I, I, I love stories like that. Have you considered creating your own comic book? Yeah, I, I, I definitely have a bunch of ideas. Um, in fact, like, I guess I haven't really talked about this maybe much or, or in depth, but two separate times I have had pitches accepted at 
Image Comics, but my artist sort of took too long, and I did t too poor a job of uh, communicating with them, and, and they both like got dropped. It is the pit and the pendulum, James. Hello, Atomicus. Hello, Jojo. My friend's parents live down the road from J.D. Salinger. There you go. What about Bigfoot? No, I don't believe in Bigfoot either, or intelligent alien life that's visited here, or anything like that. No. I'm a real skeptical guy when it comes to all that stuff. <laughs> uh, difficult is here and says, I always feel awkward when people start telling me their ghost stories. I mean, sometimes it can be a little bit like somebody telling you their dream. It's like, I know that, like, emotionally, your dream meant a lot to you. But we always, like, forget details and, like, trying to just describe the dream. It's never that interesting. It, it, unless you're just, like, talking to someone and you're both, like, trying to analyze your dreams. It's, it's never that interesting to hear somebody's dream story. And then this guy opened the door and he had a whole plate of Eggo waffles. I was terrified. And you're like, what? I, I, I don't get it. Spring-heeled Jack. What about him? No, I don't believe in that either. I don't believe in anything. I don't believe in ghosts or angels, or aliens, the afterlife, monsters. I guess I feel like the real world has plenty of mysteries of its own to reveal to me. Bloody Mary. No, but of course I believe in Beetlejuice. Um, you talk about your your dreams. I know I do. I'm, I'm a total hypocrite. I, 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 I can't help it. Like, talking about them out loud helps us understand, interpret, and sometimes remember aspects of it. But you have to admit, like, hearing other people's dreams is usually not that interesting. And I know that, like, people are probably bored hearing me talk about my dreams, but I still want to do it. How do you feel when family members tell you about ghost experiences? I don't think I've ever really had a family member tell me about a ghost experience, to be honest. Not, like, really. Um, yeah, I do, of course I, I believe in genies. Specifically, I dream of genie. They should remake Wishmaster, but the evil genie looks like Barbara Eden. That's a pretty scary idea. Give me a million dollars, Hollywood. I've done it. I've found a successful formula. I'm doing fine, Terry. How are you? As a kid, I loved X-Files. Can't watch it anymore. Mulder drives me nuts. I sort of know what you mean, but I think that those first, I'll say five seasons pretty rock solid uh, up through the first movie basically then they're really treading water with the mythology but I still think that there are the occasional like two or three really good episodes every year even in the later years um, you go back and you watch and like there's some really amazing actors and directors and stuff like that that they uh, they use on, on X-Files but yeah it was it was of its time. How was meeting Stan Lee? Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, let me think. Like, okay, so in terms of like meeting him in person, that was like a rush thing. Like, I just uh, was hurt. Like, part of a bunch of people that had like paid to get a picture with him, and they heard you through really fast. They just like stand here, click, awesome, go, and. Uh, and uh, but but I got to interview him once, and so that that I got to spend some more time, like actually getting to talk with him, and that was definitely a uh, a treat. You're not doing oh I'm you are doing great oh phew that's that's good that's a relief. Um, my sister says I used to think I would grow up to be a genie, and that big green bottle in the family room was my room. <laughs> oh man will you be using a bigger pen anytime soon to fill that in um 
Possibly, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on it right this second. Let's, uh, let's focus on the eyes. Ironically, I didn't really start with the eyes on this one, which is uh, not super common for me. Thank you for the compliment. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, how do I pronounce that name? Ikizmi. That's my best guess. Oddly enough, genies are the one, one of the few things that I am skeptical about what time because there's just so much unexplained stuff going on. Yeah, I can. That's fair. Franco says there's a video featuring Stan and Rob Liefeld in which the latter shows all of his tropes in real time. I've seen it. Yeah, create a character. Uh, isn't uh, McFarlane in that episode as well? And they create Overkill. You know what was frustrating about that show was uh, Stanley could get such great comic book guests. And it was fun. But also, Stan just, like, wouldn't shut up. Like, I love Stanley, but, like, he he couldn't just ask a question and let the creator just go. You know, just answer the question and just go. He'd have to keep interjecting little stories or, like, agreements and stuff because he wanted to sort of be part of the whole thing. It's a little frustrating when you're, like, trying to listen and learn from other artists. You're just like, okay, Stan... Uh, Give it a break for five seconds. You're the interviewer, not like the, you know, the subject. <laughs> that was just who he was, I guess. Bella Lugosi. EC is me. Got it, got it. Oh, I see. Uh... Is there Dawn of X book you're lo looking forward to? Just whichever one uh, Hickman's writing. Yeah. Vincent Price, Bella Lugosi, or Christopher Lee, who is the king of horror? My sister said Bella Lugosi. Sorry for me, it's definitely Christopher Lee. I mean, he did all those Hammer movies. He's like one of, a fantastic Dracula. Maybe Bella Lugosi's better, but Christopher Lee played him more times. Played actually more than one version of Dracula. Um old-fashioned, modern-day, and even one uh, against uh, kung fu vampires. I mean, that's pretty dope. Uh, he was in The Wicker Man. He was in all sorts of amazing things. Gotta go with Christopher Lee. Love Christopher Lee. He was so... He was such a, a badass dude. Fought in World War II. Made heavy metal a a albums in his later years. Just a fascinating dude. Got to be a James Bond villain. Got to be in Star Wars. Got to be in uh, uh, Lord of the Rings. Gremlins 2. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. I mean, yeah, such a cool dude. Have you ever seen some award show where Stanley is dressed up as Revolver Ocelot and gave Hideo Kojima an award? No, and I want to now. Uh, Funky Pat says, I'm a painter. I've been watching you draw, and I don't know why you don't use a paintbrush and ink to block in those large black areas. Our crumb does it a lot faster. I just don't have that many tools because I don't draw that often. That's all. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, but now you're talking uh, the, uh, the version by... Um, Tim Burton. That, that, I, I didn't really care for that that movie, but whatever. 
He was a villain against Captain America. <laughs> Probably not too many of you remember that. There was a TV movie, uh, two TV movies, I should say, starring Captain America. And uh, Christopher Lee was like just this businessman that went up against Captain America in one of them. I hear you, Chibi. I can hear you, Chibi. How could I forget my markers? My markers! What do you think about the older sci-fi artists like Jean Girard and Mizière? Fantastic. Very talented. We couldn't get this far without them. The motorcycle and the transparent shield. Yep. Captain America, Death Too Soon. That was the uh, one with Christopher Lee. Not a good movie, for the record. He plays like some sort of South American drug lord, I, th I think? It's been a long time since I saw that. And it's really not worth a rewatch. It's amazing what we had to settle for when I was a kid, like for superhero stuff. We were just like, well, he's got a shield and he calls himself Captain America. I guess that's kinda close <laughs> I think those TV movies as bad as they were as cheesy and low budget as they were they were still better than the 1990 Captain America Marvel uh, I was gonna say tried to make I mean they did technically make it uh, oh the 1990 Captain America movie is abysmal it is it is bad it's hilariously bad how come that 70s Captain America didn't meet the Incredible Hulk rights were all with different companies like in terms of people that um, adapted it stub my big toe and it bled oh my gosh that's pretty bad that's a bad stub yeah, with J.D. Salinger's son stealing cars as Captain America. He steals at least two, but it may have been three cars that Captain America steals, and he steals them all the same way by pretending he's got a stomach ache, getting out of the car, and when someone sympathetically goes to help him, he runs around the car and steals it. What a superhero. And he's not even stealing, like, cool race cars. He's stealing just, like, average sedans. Like, nothing exciting at all. But he does that at least twice. It's hilarious. We've come a long way since Surfer Thor and Transparent Shield Captain America. But Linda Carter is still best Wonder Woman. She definitely uh, was good. I didn't think she necessarily had great material to work with. But she definitely looked and acted the part. You know, she was confident and, and and really charming there's no question about that oh, I love Vincent Price flicks Pit and the Pendulum is one of my favorites awesome thank you thank you well I shouldn't even say thank you. You didn't necessarily say, like, great drawing. You just said that you liked the thing that I based my drawing on. So I just took a compliment for no reason. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. I made that movie myself. I wasn't even born yet, but somehow I, uh, somehow I made it. Christopher Lee was in a Police Academy movie. He was? If he was, it had to be mi uh, Mission to Moscow. But I don't remember that very well. Uh, they didn't have a Doctor Strange TV series in the 70s. They had a TV movie. One TV movie. 
I really like the way you shaded the face. Thanks. I'm imagining like uh, all the lights coming from like, you know, over here onto his face. So casting just a couple like harsh shadows there. Let me uh, finish up here with what I was originally thinking. They had a Doctor Strange TV movie with the Incredible Hulk. Uh, no, Doctor Strange was just by himself. The Hulk was not in that one. They had several Incredible Hulk uh, TV movies, and one of them did star Thor. Another one had Daredevil. Um, I think those are the only superheroes that actually crossed over back in the day when in live action. Uh, good, I'm inspiring you to stay up late and draw. That sounds awesome. Do it. It is pretty late. It's very kind of you guys to stay up this late with me. It's fun to see so many of the same faces. Uh, yep, Captain Marvel show. Yep. What are your thoughts on the Joker movie? I forgot if you already covered your opinion. Several times. Didn't really care for it is the short story. Just felt like it was stuff I've seen before in uh, Scorsese movies. Uh, Captain Marvel had a show in the 40s or 50s, right? He had some serials. He was actually, I believe, the first superhero to get some, some movie serials. Uh, and that would have been... I guess it might have been the end of the 40s. It's really hard to remember without looking it up but any of you could wikipedia it it's kind of funny they do a couple good effects for sort of like you know making him seem to fly or be super strong without like you know any significant special effects they did a few good things with it but he's kind of it's kind of violent you ever draw comics before yeah not like marvel or dc comics i've done a bunch of independent comics and then like you know mainstream like educational comics i guess you'd call them I've been published in some of those a handful of times. At the end of the day, this is just a pinup, which doesn't really show any talent that I may or may not have for comics, because comics are more than a good drawing. Comics are always good sequential storytelling. Um, so... Batman had his first serial in 1943. Well, whatever he did, I'm pretty sure Captain Marvel came before it. Now, well, Captain America had some early movie serials, but he, he did not have a live-action TV show. You're thinking of Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was the one that was paired up with Mighty Isis. Yeah, it was him and an old man going across the country in a Winnebago solving crimes. It was pretty weird. I haven't done a video on Usagi Yojimbo yet. I would like to at some point. Can you give us some hints on what your image comic pitch ideas were? I mean, I don't want to go into all of it, but let me think. One of them was a story about um, warriors throughout like time being abducted by aliens and forced to um, battle in gladiatorial matches on their planet and then like from there it goes into sort of like a uh, a revolution and then what was the other one the other one was um the other one was about these spaceships that would like come down they come down to earth and they capture tons and tons of people like there's soldiers that come out of it and, and they're not aliens. There's, they're, they're other humans. And the story is basically just that, like, humanity had already spread to this to, across the galaxy so long ago we can't even, like, remember it. In fact, so long ago that there was a war that ended. No one remembers that war, but some of the war machines, specifically these spaceships, are still on a programmed course to go to other planets where humanity has evolved 
and capture them and conscript them into service. So like it's it's for like this war that doesn't exist anymore, but people are still being conscripted and and, and forced to like fight like taught to, to battle and going to like another yeah anyway so i've th those are two rough ideas for for things that i had uh, picked up i'd love to do them i've got some other like sci-fi ideas a, a werewolf horror idea and one thing i'd really love to do is uh like a non-fiction uh account of my time as a real life superhero which i came to sort of think was not a great idea in the end But that does have some, I think, exciting and fun stories. I guess I shouldn't be too afraid to say it because I'm saying it in something that's like, you know, documented. I already have documentation and stuff like that. ESPN was mean to me in my superhero vid. It wasn't a flattering angle for me, that's for sure. Um, anyway, uh, I haven't seen uh, the, the TV version of Fargo. I've heard lots of good things. No hurt feline. I've heard lots of good things. Um, I would love to get around to it. I know no one will steal the ideas. Um, you know. At this point, you know, I've, I've put it out there. So if anyone did, I'd be like, mm, I've got documentation. <laughs> Ultimately, it's all about the execution, you know, whenever you have an idea. It doesn't matter how original it seems. It all depends on how you specifically execute it. Um, that comes down to the art, the pacing, the character arcs that you come up with. So, I would just say, like, don't be too precious with your ideas. Because if you're any good, you can always come up with more. Definitely protect your creations and in in your work, but I'm just saying, like, don't be, don't be too precious and be like somebody will steal it and make a million dollars. No, you can always come up with more ideas, and they don't all make a million dollars, even if they seem amazing. That's all. Do you think if America legalizes cannabis, Marvel will allow cannabis in a positive light to show up in comics? Yeah, if it's legalized, it, they might at some point. But I think that they'd also want to like wait and see what kind of health risks it it carries, um, because you know it's legal to drink and it's legal to smoke cigarettes, and they still don't want to like do a lot of that in there. Do I have any Steve Ditko stories? How close did you come to meeting him? Not close at all. Um, you know, he doesn't come to conventions or anything, so uh, I never had any close contact with Steve Ditko. Um, the only thing I thought about at some point was you can't, you could find his address that was out there. You know, like he, he lived in an apartment that was also his studio in New York. So, I, I mean, I did give some thought to like the idea of like going there and buzzing just to see if I could talk to him. I thought about it, but I never actually tried it because I was like, I just didn't think it would go well. I can't, I've, I've never really heard any stories about it going well. Yeah, he was incredibly reclusive. Um, well, thank you anyway for joining, Eric, even if it's not your first time. Stephen King said he's approached by people with ideas for his books all the time, says the difference between them and writers is, like himself is he actually puts pen to paper and just does it exactly everybody's like oh i've got an idea i've got an idea well if you're not willing to put in the work of like writing it down editing it like rewriting it you're not really a writer you're just a guy with an idea and everybody has an idea everybody yeah that's true you could have mailed steve ditko he he, he would sometimes um answer mail so um that that could have been an option but i never really did uh, I would definitely consider doing an episode on the question at some point. It's an interesting, weird character that um, ha has had some good stories, actually.
Dark Side versus Thanos, who wins? Dark Side. He's the original. So I say Dark Side, even though I like Thanos. The guy in the dock just went and got an interview with Ditko. Was just wondering, uh, are you talking about um, uh, who's that uh, British uh, TV show host uh, that went like discovering Ditko was the name of the documentary? Jonathan Ross. Yeah, they went to see him, but he didn't allow any cameras. So it's cool that he got to see it. But what's the grossest thing you've ever seen? Um. just like you know people getting like hurt like like the more i think about it like just just yeah like people like being very very incredibly injured do you have any suggestions for a dystopian dark complex graphic novel um ronin by frank miller mm. What else is a good sort of dystopian? Found a rotting porcupine in the woods once. That sounds pretty bad. That sounds pretty bad. I can never find back issues or even torrent files of question, and I know that despite what Razorfist says, Dennis O'Neill had to make the questioning interesting. Yeah. In Search of Ditko on YouTube. Yeah, definitely uh, recommend watching that. It's It definitely gives a bunch of Ditko's history, and it's interesting. It's just that ultimately you don't get to see him. Yeah, Ditko did do the question, but it was for um, Charlton. What comics do you consider emotionally wise in their handling of character relationship development? Cool question. Um, Blankets by Craig Thompson. It's pretty good. Um, Love and Rockets by the Hernandez brothers at uh, Fantagraphics. I'm sure there's plenty of others. I have ideas, characters with backgrounds, the works. I just can't plot to save my life. Well... That is what uh that what that's what makes a writer not just world building and character development but like you know actually having a story for them. But keep at it. Anyone can do it. Um, read some books on structure and just think like, okay, who do I want my character to be? And then almost like, what's the furthest from it, or what would like block the character the most from actually like realizing their potential? And then how could they surmount that? And then, like, how could, like, so study things like, you know, story structure, uh, the hero myth arc, the monomyth. I think things like that you can always learn from. Unless you, until you have a better way of doing things, there are established ways that stories work. That does not make them all predictable. It just makes them enjoyable and it makes them work. Any experimental avant-garde comic recommendations? Oh, that's an interesting idea. What's something sort of experimental? Hmm. I've come across a lot of stuff like that at SPX, the Small Press Expo. But trying to remember one is like the big trick. 
even if I did, I don't know that they'd necessarily be like anything that would be easy to find. So that's kind of a trick. Anything by Morbius, yeah. <sighs> didn't Mr. S Ditko, didn't Steve Ditko also create a character called Mr. A? Uh, yeah, he did. He worked on him right up until he died. He worked on that character. He would put out issues every once in a while. Um, I did an episode about Steve Ditko that I think is pretty in-depth and uh, talks about stuff like that. The Inkle is always a good read for me. The Inkle is pretty interesting. Have I seen any of Professor Professor Geek's videos? I haven't. Character archetypes and tropes. It's kind of what I like to do. Yeah. So I actually probably would not want to watch that just because I would not want to be influenced to cover the same topics or have similar opinions. Um, at least nothing that I could be accused of plagiarizing, so I would probably avoid that just to be on the safe side. Oh, thanks for the compliment, Tacky. I, I, I think I like uh, the episode I did on, on Steve Ditko. I feel like that was one that came out quite well. Um, I feel like when I did it, there hadn't been a ton of topics like that, so it's good. Chibi's quiet tonight. I think she's feeling healthier and healthier since I started giving her medicine. How would you like to see the X-Men introduced in the MCU? They just exist. I love that book, uh, Austin. I think there's so much to learn from Joseph Campbell's uh, idea of the hero with a thousand faces. I think that there's a lot to learn there. Um, I'm definitely a proponent of that. you guys hear that siren in the background? It feels kind of loud to me. Don't usually hear sirens uh, out here. I'm a little secluded compared to where I used to live. Uh, would you ever want to change your real life name to something else? It's never really occurred to me, to be honest. Um, yeah, I read the Vision series. If you're talking about the one by uh, Tom King, I liked it. thought it was pretty cool. Julian Jane's origin of consciousness in the breakdown of the bicameral mind. I'll consider it. I'll consider it. Oh yeah, you did mention that in a previous live video now that you mention it. I admire your integrity. I mentioned the um, liking the, the hero monomyth and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm a fan of comic book men. Any thought on Walt Flanagan's art? You know, it's fine. It, it's not. It's not. It's not embarrassingly bad. I don't think it's necessarily like mainstream quality. I don't think he would have, like DC would have let him work on a book if he didn't know Kevin Smith. But, you know, he gets the ideas across. Um, it's readable. Did I like Sin City too? I didn't. I don't. I don't remember it very well. I don't remember it very well. I did not like that one. I found it quite boring. The Tooth. No, I've never read The Tooth. That one's new to me. Just using a kneaded eraser to clean up uh, the face a little. See, see that I like it. I think I do. I think this will work for tonight.
I like kneaded erasers because they don't smudge. Sorry it was an early morning and a long day. Gotta fall asleep. Talk to you tomorrow. See you, Gene. Thanks for stopping by. Always nice to have you here. It's my little sister. Very supportive, isn't she? Thinking of uh, Frank Miller, people were talking about Sin City, and I was thinking, boy, that guy did some great comics, and some not-so-great comics, but he did some great comics, you know? Like, let, let's stick with the positive for a moment. Uh, not as so good with the movies. Um, on Harmontown, Dan Harmon's show from um, a few weeks back, he had on Ed Newmeyer, the writer of RoboCop. Which, I've I, I work digitally a bunch of mini buckets, I love I love it, but it's fun working like this. Um, I like um, I like RoboCop a lot. I think that it's literally underrated how good it is. Um, I think that that script is just marvelous. It's got satire. It's got character development. It's got one hell of a final act. The story structure in that is so rock solid. So rock solid. Um, but like when he went to movies, like he started by like doing um, Robocop 2, Frank Miller I'm talking about now. And the thing is, he only did that because the... Or they only used it because the studio desperately wanted to make a RoboCop 2. And they were dealing with a writer's strike. So everyone in the Writers Guild of America was striking. So they got like a waiver to allow, to allow uh, Frank Miller to write it. <laughs> it's, uh, and, and you know what? RoboCop 2 is, it has a bunch of interesting ideas. It's... It's not a terrible movie. It doesn't compare to the first one, but it isn't terrible. It's a, it's got a few interesting ideas. It's got a few interesting performances. But learning that like, you know, Frank Miller essentially was just like, you know, used because he wasn't you know, in the writers guild is kind of like a knock to the nuts to learn that. I was like, "Oh." And then I hope just never watch RoboCop 3. That's the only advice I can give. Like, don't watch RoboCop 3. It's Daredevil. It, it's terrible. I stuttered because I saw Terry said I liked Frank Miller's run on Daredevil. Frank Miller's run on Daredevil is fantastic. So even if he turns into a total, like, weirdo and I don't like everything that he writes these days, you know, I don't know the exact turning point where I started to not really like his stuff anymore, but I think it was Dark Knight Strikes Again. Um, I, 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 I like some of the early Sin City. I love the stuff he did with like Batman Year One. Um, uh, you know, the stuff like Ronin, the stuff like, uh, I don't know. He's, he's, his Daredevil run is just fantastic. Just fantastic. It really holds up. Yeah. What happened with his spirit movie? You know, that looked so bad even in the previews that I was just like, I ain't watching this one. And I, I don't regret that at all. Someone said, why don't I just like, you know, ink these huge parts in like, you know, a, a bigger pen or paintbrush or something. And yeah, I probably should. That's all I can say. You're, 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 I'm sure you're right. Just don't have the tools. So I'm making do with what I have. Which is, which is fine. You watch The Spirit in theaters? My God, you're still alive, huh? You're the one. You're the one that made it. 
<clears throat> Spidey Maximum Carnage or the other, which is better? The other. Not by a lot, but the other. Oh wait, Maximum Carnage, not Maximum Clonage. Mm, in that case, I'd go back. I think that Maximum Carnage is fun. It has a ton of crossovers, like Spidey's at the center of it, but there's a bunch of... Uh, he teams up with tons of other superheroes. I don't know. Yeah, I like Maximum Carnage okay. Hi, Chibi. Are you talking now? Everyone was curious if you're all right. Now you're going to trick them into thinking you're not, huh? You had your dinner. What do you want? Cat. Well, I'm down to something like, I don't know, six weeks or so until I'm back in Japan. Definitely looking forward to that. Aim to get y'all some, some more gachapons. Get some interesting ones in there. And uh, I'll probably get some art supplies. Go to like something like Sakaido. Go to like some uh, manga stores like uh, Mandarake. Nakano Broadway. I aim to, to get some cool stuff. Hopefully make some video content for for everyone. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. I'm, de I'm, I'm in the process of booking some studio space with YouTube so that I can make um, a special Comic Tropes episode there. We'll, we'll see. It all has to come together, but I think it will. I think I'm going to be able to do something kind of special. But if anyone knows any, like, you know, creators or publishers over there, put me in touch, man. I'd love to do more special stuff, so just let me know. Why going to Japan? For Wrestle Kingdom? Yeah, I'm going to actually wrestle. When you're uh, heading in Japan, give me a shout if you're in Osaka, and I'll take you to dinner. Ah, oh, that's so nice of you. I'm only going to be in... Um, Tokyo. I'm only there for about a week. I'll try to post a Japan vlog. Um, let's see. Um, what do I think of pirating torrenting? Uh, I don't partake. Um, I, I, I can't support it. I've got too many friends that work in comics and, you know, I, I do think that, like, people are taking from their livelihood when they take something for free and if they say like oh well I can't afford it well you're not creating any incentive to save for any of it either um so yeah I, I, I can't support pirating I, I don't pirate like music or movies or anything like that yeah how do you write comic book is it script form it is for me yeah it's pretty descriptive I enjoyed the last Japan visit I saw when you highlighted the manga museum, etc. Yeah, uh, that was just a manga store. That was just a mandarake. Um, but yeah. Yep, this guy's gonna get sliced as soon as, as soon as Nicholas starts the pendulum going. <laughs> Meow, Chibi. I don't know what you want, love. Oh, okay. She like when I answer, all of a sudden she gives like a guilty meow, and like from meow, 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 and then I was like, I don't know what you want. And she goes, meow. <laughs> it's like this tiny little thing. What's a J vlogger? Is that like somebody that just makes um sort of vlog content in, in Japan? Because I'll be honest, I would uh, I would totally do that. Um, if I was ever rich, I would strongly consider moving to Japan. I've visited there several times and uh i i like it there i, I don't know what to say um you know I, I i don't i don't like everything about it uh and i don't you know i'm not a guy that like dresses up in a you know kawaii outfits <laughs> or anything but uh um i like the food i like how clean it is there i just feel very relaxed for the most part there because i like their parks and just like I don't know. 
there I think that there's a politeness there um, I've always encountered politeness even when I went like originally back in the 90s back when um, uh, you know there was there were no, the signs weren't in English back then they, 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 there are signs for traveling in English now it's amazing how much English is spoken there but when I went back in the 90s there wasn't English but they were so polite and friendly to, to, to my family and I I've, I just always had a good time I would laugh seeing you dressed up all kawaii <laughs> Thank you for the compliment, Danny Dolphin. I appreciate that. You have a cat named Missy Snurk? I love I love kitties. Have you seen the Blair Witch Soft Reboot? I did. Um, I remember I was like, I liked it, but it's totally forgettable. I can't remember anything about it except that they tried to use a drone at one point. That's all I remember. Milo? You guys have met Chibi, but you haven't really met Milo as much. This is Chibi's uh, bigger brother. This is Milo. He's my he's my boy kitty. And uh, he's shy, but he's so sweet. He's he's very affectionate. Anytime I sit down, he's on my lap. He's a really good kitty. Mm. And he likes licking my head for some reason. I saw the stream at 68, had to join you and make it 69. Thank you, Xeno Gamer. Uh, the cat in my house is a Russian blue named Dimitri. Aw. Milo, you're famous. Everyone says hello. Uh. Good kitty. He is a good kitty. He's a sweetie. And he's good to his sister most of the time. 96% of the time. Every once in a while, he, he, he wants his space. But most of the time, he cut, snuggles up with Chibi and he cleans her. Or just sits with her. They're very good to each other. From a historical and economical perspective, IP is not the main reason to incentivize creativity. Not trying to be combative. I don't quite understand the argument, I guess. What's my favorite beer? That's an interesting question, Wombus, but I don't think that I could honestly say anything in particular. I, I, I'm not a massive beer drinker. I, I, I like beer, but I kind of give, I'll drink whatever is on tap. I'll drink whatever's at a party. Um, I don't think I've ever found my favorite beer. I've got opinions on wines and liquors. But I don't have uh, any super solid opinions on um, on beer. I wish I did, but I don't. How many years have you been on YouTube? I believe it's been three years now. Pretty sure it's three. I mean, a, probably a, a little over, because I think I think I started maybe in like May or June. So let me think. Maybe it's maybe it's three and a half years now. I don't know if I'm think calculating this right because I just haven't honestly sat down and thought about it. But I'm pretty sure it's uh, pretty sure it's about three and a half years that I've been doing comic tropes. Didn't really try anything before that started a webcomic and I'm in the phase of making reference sheets hmm I don't have good advice on that uh, Xeno Gamer but I, d I certainly wish you lots and lots of luck I guess the main reason I don't have advice is I'm not 100% sure what you mean by reference sheets do you mean character models or something else Well, I think that that'll do it for tonight, just because I do still have a lot of work to do on the next Comic Tropes, which I think is fairly important to everybody there. Let me just see, uh, who does the intro music? Um, it was it was through a friend of a friend, so I don't remember the guy's name. He, it's not anybody that like had a business or anything, so I'm sorry, I don't know. 
I know that sounds terrible. What's my favorite liquor? Um, Bombay Sapphire Gin. Stealing is stealing. That's the bottom line. I, I agree. If the choice is theft or your family starving, yeah, I guess I, I agree with that. But I don't think anybody needs uh, comic books, so um, I, I would never support stealing comic books. Uh, Xenogamer means by reference sheets, I mean papers that have the colors and look for the character to keep the look in check. Oh, I mean, just draw them and say that's the look. Um, what's the topic for the next video? I don't want to give it away, but it may not be up since uh, this was brought up and it's a good question Austin um, I may not have the episode ready first thing in the morning tomorrow um, I'm running I'm running behind I, I, I gotta go work on it now that I'm finished with this and um, it'll be up tomorrow but it might be up like late tomorrow um, it's, it's all there is um, it's, it's not as bad as like having to wait a week but um, yeah I'm probably gonna be a little late wow thank you Dean that's so nice. No question? Just just a generous super chat. Well, I sincerely appreciate that. What are my thoughts about Brazil? Um, I don't know Marcelo Matare. Um, I don't really love Mike Diodato Jr.'s art. Um, but Brazil has produced many great artists. Um, give us an exclusive, Chris. Uh, could you eventually do an episode about the Valiant Nintendo comics? Well, I sort of did. Um, Go back and watch my episode on um, licensed comics, and I, and I review an ep uh, one of those issues within that. So, uh, um, what can I hint at that uh, tomorrow's episode is about? Um, um, you use this item every day to get in and out of your house. There you go. Um, I'm going to take off, everybody. Thank you, Dean, for that super chat. Very kind of you. Um, I had a good time. I had a, I had a really good time. Um, I'm not sure what tomorrow's prompt is. I'll look that up real quick before I take off. I don't know what Spooky Boys is. Sorry. Uh, with the prompt being tread. Tread. Okay. Is that what it is? It is. Number 20. Tread. That's awesome. We're almost, uh, we're almost two-thirds of the way through. Two-thirds. Love you, Chris. It's your and your show it's helped me in ways I can't get into in public well thanks Dean that means a lot that means a lot the spooky boys are skeletons oh um tread I'll have to give that some thought but you know like that could do with the uh, bottom of a shoe can be uh, walking it could walking dead uh, it could be a uh, tank I don't know is there anything uh, scary about a tank I don't know um, I'll have to give that some very serious thought but, like always, I kind of come up with it at last minute. I came up with this, like, I think somebody did suggest this idea last night, but it really only popped into my head as, like, a realistic idea literally, like, about 20 minutes before I started the live stream. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Have not seen the Orville. Sorry. The car from Christine. That's pretty solid. I, I like that idea a lot, James. I like that a lot. Um, and and San Sanity uh, does that, too. Uh, I, I didn't miss you, Sigamix. Uh, Rubber the movie. That that's pretty hilarious about a killer uh, killer tire. No, Orville wasn't canceled. It was moved to a streaming platform. I'm not sure which one, but um, there's a third season coming on a streaming platform. But I am taking off, folks. Um, I I gotta get going. I got a lot of work to do still tonight before I can go to sleep. I may not even get sleep. I don't know. I hope I can get some before work tomorrow. But anyway, um, I definitely had fun. Um. Keep reading comics. And the other thing I like to say on these live streams is bye.